Hi everyone, I'm Doug from DigiPen in Redmond. In this video, we'll apply our understanding of points and coordinates to the sprites in Scratch. Think back to our lesson on the Cartesian coordinate system where you imagined meeting a friend at a park by the big tree. By the big tree in the park is an effective way for humans to describe where something or someone is, but it doesn't work so well for computers, so we introduced the Cartesian coordinate system, which allows us to describe locations with numbers. Let's imagine this same scene in a game with a Cartesian coordinate grid for reference. Here is the tree, here is your friend, and here you are. Now, what are the x and y coordinates of your friend? This is a difficult question to answer. It looks like the left side of your friend is somewhere around 80, and the right side is at 160. And the top and bottom of your friend seem to be at about 110 and negative 20. These measurements define a rectangular region, but that's not how most games would answer the question. Instead, most games would choose a single point, usually within the area of your friend, and say that that is the position of your friend. This is exactly what Scratch does as well. In Scratch, every sprite has an X position for where it is in the game window from side to side, and a Y position for where it is from top to bottom. As a sprite moves to the right, its X position increases, and as it moves to the left, it decreases. As it moves up the screen, its Y position increases, and as it moves down, its Y position decreases. So far in these videos, we've always moved our sprites around by pointing them in a direction and using the move block to make them go in that direction. Now we have another way that we can move our sprites around, by modifying their x and y coordinates directly. Scratch has a set of blocks in the motion category that do this. It also has a pair of reporter blocks that can be used to get a sprite's coordinates. Okay, let's set up a new situation. Let's say your friend is over here, and we want them to move to the tree. How do you do this in a game? If you set their x and y coordinates to match the tree's position, they'll end up right here, on top of it, or maybe inside of it, depending on how you interpret what we're seeing. In any case, it's not what we want. We're looking for something like this, which is more realistic. Here, there's a small gap between your friend and the tree. We call this gap an offset. It's a difference in position between two things. To move your friend to the tree, what you really want to do is move them to the position of the tree plus some offset to put them at a position a comfortable distance away from it. We can do this in Scratch with a clever combination of blocks. First, we use a go-to block to move your friend to the exact position of the tree, and then, immediately afterward, we use the change x and change y blocks to apply the offset. In this case, your friend is about 60 units to the left of the tree, which means an x offset of negative 60, and about 30 units below it, meaning a y offset of negative 30. If we use these change x and change y blocks immediately after the go to block, then nobody will have a chance to see that your friend ever had the same position as the tree. In many space shooters, the hero is not free to move wherever they like. Instead, they are restricted to moving within a set of boundaries. Let's apply our new knowledge to our Scratch Invaders game and implement a boundary checking system. Load what you've already done in that project, or visit the link in the description below, and then click the See Inside button. 
The basic idea of the boundary check that we want to add to Scratch Invaders is simple. We compare the hero's Y position to a maximum value. If it's greater than the maximum, then they've gone too far upward, and we pull them back down to the maximum. Naturally, we'll make a variable for this maximum value. Click the orange Variables category on the left, and then click the Make a Variable button. Name the new variable Hero Top Boundary. You can toggle the box next to its reporter block in the block palette to hide its watcher in the game window. Before we use it, we should initialize it. Make sure the hero sprite is selected, then find the set block in the block palette. Drag it into the code area and add it to the body of the initialize function. Make sure that hero top boundary is selected from its variable list. Now we need to determine the value to set it to. You can work this out yourself, or you can just use the number negative 90 which should work pretty well, regardless of your hero's sprite. Whatever number you end up with, type it into the value field of the set block. Now we can move on to writing the boundary checking code. This code is easy to package neatly in a function. Click the pink My Blocks category on the left, and then click the Make a Block button. Name the new function boundary check. Let's consider again what we're going to do. If the hero's Y position is too high, then we modify it. If then, we'll use an if then block. Click the gold control category on the left. In the block palette, find the if then block. Drag it into the code area and add it to the boundary check function. We want to see whether the Y position is greater than the top boundary, so click the green Operators category on the left and find the Greater Than block. Drag and drop it into the Condition slot in the If Then block. Click the medium blue Motion category and find the Y position Reporter block. Drag and drop it into the left value field of the Greater Than block. Now click the orange Variables category and find the Hero Top Boundary Reporter block. Drag and drop it into the Right Value field of the Greater Than block. This block now reports whether the hero's position is above the top boundary. If it is, we want to set it to be equal to the top boundary, so click the Medium Blue Motion category and find the Set Y block. Drag it into the code area, and attach it inside the mouth of the If Then block. Right-click the Hero Top Boundary Reporter block, and select Duplicate. Place the new copy inside the value field in the Set Y block. This completes the Boundary Check function. Now we just need to call it. Click the pink My Blocks category. Drag the boundary check block into the code area and attach it beneath the handle movement block inside the mouth of the main forever block over here. Click the green flag. Now the hero is restricted to the boundary enforced by the boundary check function. Let's recap what we've learned in this video. First, we revisited our friend in the park, imagining the scene as if it were in a video game. We showed that the question of the location of your friend is a bit tricky, but Scratch would use just two numbers for it, an X position and a Y position, also known as coordinates in the Cartesian system. Next, we covered how these X and Y values go up and down as a sprite moves right and left or up and down in the game window. Then we learned about the set X and set Y blocks that Scratch uses to set the positions of sprites, as well as the X position and Y position reporter blocks that can be used to read these values. 
Next, we discussed the idea of an offset, a small change in position applied to an object when it's moving relative to another object to make sure it is put in the right place. Finally, we used our new understanding to enforce a movement boundary to our hero in Scratch Invaders. In the next video, we'll introduce sound effects and show how they can be used to enhance the experience of a game.